Hey everyone, so pumped to share with you Adi Ashanti's The End of Your World. Adi Ashanti has made a profound influence on my life over the last couple of years. And most recently, Frank Yang, who has also made a very profound influence on my life, was adamant about reading The End of Your World and passing it along to people to read. And so I will be sharing with you some of the core highlights that I had from reading the book, and I hope it brings you tremendous value. All right, The End of Your World. Uncensored straight talk on the nature of enlightenment. This was such a clear channel by Adi Ashanti. The truth just came through that expression so eloquently. All right. Starting things off with a bang. Spiritual awakening is an unshakable realization that who we are is the oneness of life. The most important transformation of people's lives. So, you know what is in the North Star position for awakening, for enlightenment. The process of shattering your skin suit and merging with the universal beingness, the oneness of all life, the most important transformation of people's lives. And then from that essence, when you understand the unity essence, then everything in the expression ends up being aligned and pure and in service to the rest of life awakening. And that's in contrast with the expression coming from a place of ignorance and separation and ego, which then has the taste of malevolence to it. All right. Waking up real authentic glimpses of reality, awaken out of their familiar senses of self what the world is into a much greater reality far beyond anything they knew existed. The whole sense of self disappears. The way people perceive the world suddenly changes, find themselves without any sense of separation. And this is why Ramana Maharshi and so many of the other greats have talked about Atma Vichara, self-inquiry. Self-inquiry can take you all the way to the nature of reality logically, reasonably, deducing Investigate, who am I? What is I? What is that sense of self? And just going through the process of deconstructing that sense of self. And then you find yourself as the universe. We no separation, yet individuation which is beautiful, no separation yet individuation, which is why this costume gets to be the Atlas expression and your costumes are the unique expressions that they are. That's the unique individuation. That's the unique individuated journey aspect to the oneness. Between themselves and the rest of the world, Waking up from a dream you didn't even know you were in until you were jolted out of it. So you can think about the entire substrate of all that is as 
a big electromagnetic field and that being the ocean that we all share there's only one infinite creator and that's us that's i the big god absolute i and so you wake up from those limited isolated sense of self that you imagined yourself to be Spiritual awakening, one awakens from the dream of separation created by the egoic mind. So the sense of self ends up having no center. So again, when you shatter out of your skin suit into universal beingness, you recognize that that big electromagnetic ocean has no center. That big infinite vast oceanicness expresses itself as the waves which are these appearances which are very cool unique expressions that then are at play with one another in the process of piercing through that veilless veil and recognizing their true nature ego is simply the mechanism our mind uses to resist life as it is it is a verb the resistance to what is the pushing away or pulling toward grasping and rejecting forms a sense of self distinct separate from the world around us realize with incredible clarity what we truly are is in no way limited to the small sense of self that we thought we were experiential knowledge of awakening a shift in one's perception from an isolated individual to universal everything and everyone and everywhere at the same time and I just write that this is high-level perception continued and that's the first visual distillation that we published highlevelperception.com and so again it's a shift in your perception from the isolated individual to universal Pretty simple, guys. Really, really important to understand how simple it is and to understand what is in that North Star position, the shift from the individual to the God state to the universal state of beingness. So awakening is the one recognizing itself. Spiritual awakening is a remembering. What we are wakes up from the me wakes up from the seeking we are not capable of imagining what it is that we are what we are is that which is watching and so when you tap into that what is watching that turns you inward and then you recognize that there's some sort of formless electromagnetic flux that is the process of a nothingness that is comprehending the infinite creation like this transmission over the internet and so you shift into a much more formless state of being that is infinitely vast what we are is that which manifests as all things as all experiences as all personalities we are that which dreams the whole world into existence unspeakable and unexplainable authentic awakening Perception opens up to the true nature of things and never closes back down again. Full awakening means that we perceive from the view of oneness all the time. So in a sense, your aperture is contracted. And then upon awakening, your aperture is expanded to that infinitude, to the universal beingness. And it goes through a process of the attempt to close back down a little bit but then you shatter through it again and then you're at an even more expansive state and then it closes back down a little bit less 
and then you open it up again. And so over time, there's a, there's a shift and then there's the boom. So it's very gradual, roller coastery, and then there's also the sudden pops. And again, the unexplainable and un- unspeakable aspect to it is really important. How it is that which manifests as all things. That very one intelligence, the very central intelligence. There isn't any separation anywhere. Ultimately, the trajectory every being is on, whether he or she knows it or not, is a trajectory toward full awakening, toward a full knowing, toward a full experiential knowledge of what he or she is, toward unity, toward oneness. True awakening, all is one. We are not a particular thing or a particular someone. We are both nothing and everything simultaneously. Nobody's heart will be totally fulfilled until that perceiving from the point of view of truth is continuous. Boom. Once a moment of this clear seeing has actually taken place, the aperture of our awareness can never completely close down again. It is much more accurate to talk about what we lose upon awakening rather than what we gain. Not only lose ourselves who we thought we were, lose our entire perception of the world. Students say this is nothing like what I imagined. (laughs) You as the one have awakened very disorienting to this human structure. Welcoming to that new world, that new state of oneness. And then the path after awakening is a path of dissolving our remaining fixations, a.k.a. purification. And so you can think about it as two steps. The first step being separation, seeking unity. And it typically tries to find that unity in relationships and substances and experiences material possessions and it never does because it's all empty and upon the turn inward because of the drill sergeant of awakening suffering coming with a sludge hammer and whapping you Like in the parable of the prodigal son, you turn inward and you find, like Rumi said, that the diamond was around your neck the whole time. And then you, as unity, purify. Because you have these remaining fixations. I still have these remnants of conditioning that I'm perpetually, vigilantly watching to ensure that I'm coming from a place of serving life awakening, perpetually, frame by frame. So that's purification. Before awakening, we are doing it from the perspective of separation. After awakening, we are doing it from the perspective of non-separation. We. Trying to put the truth into words is a fool's game. Because the moment that you try and bound the boundless mystery you auto inhibit its freedom i am offering you strategies for awakening and strategies to help you with what happens after awakening zen don't mistake the finger pointing to the moon for the moon itself
Everything I am teaching must be awakened to, must be lived for it to be real, real direct experience of knowing what you truly are. Do I really know or have I just taken on the beliefs and opinions of others? What do I know for certain? What do I know for certain? Destroys your world, destroys your whole sense of self. False perceptions. Consciousness will be imprisoned within the dream state. I know almost nothing. I don't know who I am. I don't know what the world is. I don't know if this is true. I don't know if that is true. Something within our being opens up and we step into the unknown. Stand up within yourself and ask these questions and be open and sincere about what you find that is the most important thing. So ask the big questions and be sincere and open and honest about what you find and surround yourself with other people that have went through the process of awakening to the true nature and then undergoing a process of a trusting further purification and refining of anchoring that unbounded mysterious nature so impulse for true awakening equals courage to purify 10,000 layers of self-deception so again if you're truly earnest about awakening, you're going to have to be courageous to purify these 10,000 layers of self-deception. You end up being a self-purification engine. Comes from a place that wants the truth more than it wants to feel good. Mm. Mm. Mm, Adia, that's so beautiful. Love that one. We must break out of the paradigm of always seeking to feel better. Impulse to awaken gives us the courage to look at all the ways in which we deceive ourselves. Me is always seeking union. That's literally the purpose of creation. The very purpose of creation is to undergo this dreamed evolutionary ascent where the self-awareness goes from a place of being veiled by its forgetfulness of its true nature and going through a seeking process to pierce that veil into union with its true nature. So part of intelligent infinity uses the mechanism of this electromagnetic field architected universe that appears as a space time that appears as planets orbiting stars that have evolved life from single cell to civilization And then those self-aware, individuated mind-body-spirit complexes going through a process of seeking externally for peace and happiness and union with material objects or relationships or substances or experiences, then they get hit by the drill sergeant of awakening, which is suffering with a big sledgehammer which catalyzes that turn inward like in the parable of the prodigal son and then they find like rumi said that diamond necklace that was already there the whole time and so they taste that union of that infinite conscious nature the absolute unbounded mysterious nature the unified field nature and then they go through a process of purifying those last bits of conditioning and then that is how this 
expression of intelligent infinity is architected. And there are infinite other possibilities for expressions of intelligent infinity to undergo this dreamed ascensionary process of piercing through a veil of forgetting and awakening, uniting with true nature. Cool. That may be the most clear transmission that's come through this unit of the nature. So I will likely also clip this and post it. That was solid. And if that resonated, re-listen to it because intelligent infinity endlessly expresses itself in ways that are infinitely mysterious. And this is but one way that it expresses itself. Awakening me, awakening from the me. When one is truly awakened, when one has gone beyond the veil of duality, things are perceived as essentially the same. Everything is literally a manifestation of the same thing. True and authentic awakening, who and what we are becomes clear. No longer a question about it. It is a done deal. End of seeking. And this is important to remember that you're also going to have this guidance from the field that is interested in learning something about biotechnology and bioengineering or decentralized applications, Ethereum. And that is important to not ex extinguish said uh, gift actualization simultaneously and that's where a lot of the bodhisattva vibe comes in so awakening is when the one is locked in and the seeker has been exhausted Out of its identification with the dream state, return back to its natural state of being. The seeker may be in the process of being dissolved. Transform one's life. The whole egoic structure that gets built up around the spiritual quest is suddenly gone. The honeymoon of awakening, dropping away of the seeker. Consciousness wakes up from its dream of separation. There is a great sense of relief. Laughing, crying, deep emotional release. Relief of finally being outside of the dream state. <laughs> ah. And it does feel like there's this gradiented process of as soon as you like begin questioning how worldly pleasures are are empty you become more and more uh, less intoxicated so you you decrease your level of intoxication by lakshmi by this little attractor out in maya that's pulling you out the first kiss the first real kiss of reality truth of who and what you are complete flow no resistance in your being everything is actually being done you as a separate entity aren't doing anything complete and utter non-resistance decisions are made without actually deciding them 
a sense of obviousness. This has been most interesting recently for myself as well, where there's more and more clearly it feels like a field. It just feels like the field is in this operational expression to serve itself in the highest way possible. The beliefs we grabbed onto and used to define ourselves are now revealed to be empty and without substance. Egoic motivation disappear. Very disorienting to the mind. Almost everything that previously motivated them in life was self-centered. The driving force propelling us through life when we are in the dream state is very self-centered. Dream state is the state where we perceive separation, always seeking something, real awakening. The whole structure of separation begins to dissolve under one's feet. Identification with our particular personality begins to dissolve. Self-centered drives disappear or are in the process of disappearing. Realization, I was eternal, unborn, undying, and uncreated. Absence of the self-centered energy that had previously driven my interest in these particular pursuits. Dissolution of ego. Awakening begins the process. <laughs> Like right now, being 28 and realizing what I've realized is hilarious because it's still so much just the beginning of this rapidly increasing purification engine and also the incredible field expressing itself more and more purely in service to life awakening. Wow. Awakening itself can be very disorienting. Everything you thought was true, you now see is not. The person you thought you were, you now see you are not. Answers that a spiritual teacher can give turned into another goal by the ego. You are new. Your perception of everything and everyone has changed. Mind is struggling to orient itself in a new context. Just let yourself fall. You don't know which way is up and which way is down. And then that plays on the Mobius strip and Klein bottle. The non-orientable surface which is this unbounded mystery <laughs> ah. Ooh. Wee. keys to the awakened view is that there is no orientation reality does not need an orientation <laughs> Deep sense of relaxation, allowing everything to be. Find your orientation by letting go totally. <sighs> Energy of non-division comes straight from the source. Allow the process of egoic dissolution to occur. Lead to a clearer and much deeper perception of reality. Awakening from the dream state of me and separation and isolation. Awakening, going from the dream state to reality. 
Awakedness woke up from the me. Awakedness woke up from the me. It's pretty interesting. It is enlightenment that is enlightened. We vacillate between our true nature and our imagined sense of self back and forth back and forth it's a great way to put it you can feel schizophrenic in a way we've seen the deeper reality and then we find ourselves back in the dream state In a conversation with somebody, saying things that are coming from the ego, knowing where they're coming from, but saying them anyway. (laughs) Oh, he's so good. So relatable. This is just the next phase in one's awakening. (laughs) There are these times where you'll you'll be consciously aware even of these frames of life that are coming from a more egoic place and that are not coming from the unity field. And then you'll notice like right at like the end of the sentence, you were like, oh my gosh, that was so manipulative and twisted and distorted. And you'll like call yourself out on it in the middle of the sentence, at the end of the sentence. And it's just like, the whole journey is to then catch it arising and then be aware of it, give it the love, light, unconditional acceptance radically as well, and then watch it dissolve and watch yourself transcend more and more into the God state. As Jesus said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's a deep programming. True nature. Spirit has opened its eyes within us. More accurate sense of whether we're moving or speaking or even thinking from truth or not. When we act from a place of untruth anyway, in spite of our knowing, it's much more painful than when we didn't know our actions were untrue. When we say something to someone that we know is untrue, it causes an inner division that is vastly more painful than when we said the same thing and thought it was true. Yeah, the pain level is another component to that where it just turns up like significantly for when you're expressing impurely and so it's a forcing function for awakening the more awake we get the higher the stakes get awakening as climbing a ladder each step you go you have less and less tendency to look down to act in ways you know aren't true or to speak in ways you know aren't true or do things you know aren't coming from truth the more awake we get the greater the consequences are the consequences of acting outside of truth become immense the slightest action or behavior that's not in accordance with the truth can be unbearable to us (laughs) and so this is a sensitivity to detect immediate catalysts for egoic behavior So you can tell when the catalyst comes and you get this immense feeling that's unbearable. And you're like, wow, my sensitivity to these catalysts is now increasing. And so you create more and more of this recognition and sensitivity to that. And even a catalog, which I'll mention here in a bit. Consequences get bigger and bigger the more we behave in ways that are not in harmony with what we know is true. It's a fierce grace. I love this. When we act from what is not true, we will only be causing ourselves pain. That knowing is a grace. 
Reality is always true to itself. When you're in harmony with it, you experience bliss. As soon as you are not in harmony with it, you experience pain. Law of the Universe. Fierceness is beautiful, helps orient us deeper and deeper into our true nature. To behave from any place other than our true nature is destructive to ourselves and just as important to the world and others around us. Right ourselves when we get off course. And this is why we wrote distortions, catalysts, reflections, purification. And that's also why we wrote this purification catalog, which is something that we're working on right now. And we'll hopefully have something really beautiful to also be able to even submit as white paper literature to the more mainstream psychology and spirituality awakening. Like you can imagine a power law of the most common distortions. It's pretty fascinating the most common ways that people feel unworthy and then transcend that lack belief. It's fascinating. So I wrote here that the question mark, the great unbounded mystery is like fierce grace with play and catalysts because it's important to remember that there's both this oneness, this graceful play, but there's also this prismatically refracted evolution of consciousness, this awakening of consciousness. And that's fierce. And it has lots of catalysts. The drill sergeant of awakening suffering coming around with a sledgehammer to whap us is fierce. And yet it's also graceful. Conditioning is karma, cause and effect. Condition to like certain things and not others, to pursue fame, money, spirituality, love, computer program. Like karma. Conditioned, programmed, behave in certain ways. Like karmic wind-up toys, going from contraction to freedom. I love that. And many people can relate with that, that that's what the process is like. From contraction to the unbounded mystery. Free. Freedom. It's thirst-quenching. It's a great way to describe the spiritual journey of the adept is thirst quenching. <laughs> Real awakening. Consciousness is liberated from this conditioning, waking from a dream, awakened from that conditioned illusory self, incredible weight and burden that such conditioning is. Awakened state, one could never again identify with the conditioned self. Sense of finality is inherent within the state of wakefulness. And there are plenty of times when the ego remnants will come in and claim finality it's fascinating on this journey awakening blows out a tremendous amount of conditioning for some people 10 percent, for others 90 percent each being has a different karmic inheritance What is still held on to? What is still confusing? What situations can get you to go into contraction, suffering, and separation? How is it that I'm unenlightening myself? How is it specifically that I'm 
putting myself back in illusion. I love these sets of questions. This is like the best way for a spiritual teacher to work with a student or adept is to ask them this set of questions. And so the main one there again is like, how am I unenlightening myself? So how am I going into contraction, suffering and separation? And another way that I've been phrasing this question to people is teach me about your cage. So where are you not free? And then that points directly at the conditioning, the contractions. And then the faster that people realize how illusory those con conditionings are that are preventing them from being free, the faster that they give those conditionings radical love, light, acceptance, they transcend those conditionings and feel the unbounded freedom so other good questions are what are my greatest distortions what triggers me into ego separation looking deeply at what it is that causes you to go back into the trance of separation start pinpointing particular ways particular thoughts particular beliefs that put you back to sleep Willingness to let life impact you. Let yourself see when life impacts you. See if you go into any sort of separation. The only person who can cause us to suffer, who can cause us to misperceive illusion and separation, who has this much power is us. Nothing in the exterior environment has the power to cause us to fall out of awakening. So it's all an inside job. If we've really awakened, we have a much less personal relationship with all this remaining karmic conditioning. We derived a sense of self from our conditioning. Before awakening, the dream state defined us. The awakened state not having to do with any self, anybody, any person. One situation is much more workable. And I love how Adyashanti said, pro-separation trance. It also reminds me of a couple years ago, four years ago, when I was first getting to know Dr. Aubrey de Grey, who has his famous pro-aging trance so civilizations in a pro-aging pro-death trance rather than being anti-aging and pro longevity pro-immortality pro anything else that is transcendent of our limitations and so we need to awaken from this pro-separation trance When we awaken, we are no longer fueling the trance of separation. Every time we re-identify with conditioning or karma, every time we believe a thought, we are putting energy back into the dream state, putting our foot back on that accelerator. Awakening involves learning how to keep your foot off the gas and recognizing what puts your foot back on. Life is where the spiritual rubber hits the road. Life will show us where we are not clear. True sincerity. We are not going to hide in the realization of the absolute. Your entire system is being dredged clean in a deeper way, capable of seeing your tendency to go into separation in a more vivid way. They drove you without you having any real understanding of what was going on. Allowing everything to become more and more conscious is a big part of the process that occurs after awakening. so beautifully said it's the nuanceification or the subtlefication of when you're coming from sourcefulness 
versus when you're coming from those old conditioning remnants. What is truly holy is perceiving from wholeness, not being divided inside. That which divides us inside that needs to be healed. There is a strong tendency in the egoic structure to use awakening as a reason to hide from all of one's inner divisions. If you perceive that there is something to do, you're deluded. Stop holding on to their fixation on an absolute view. The ego fixates. Dismissing unenlightened behavior, thought patterns, and divided emotional states. I'm not speaking to any sense of a separate self. Reality is speaking to reality. Right. So if you let that sit a little bit. So... If you begin perceiving from reality, speaking to reality perpetually, that's a rapid, direct path to awakening. Because in every interaction, you are dissolving the illusion of separation. So come from the place perpetually that sees source talking to itself reality talking to itself that which is awake has no fear it doesn't perceive anything as separate or other than itself. It doesn't even perceive delusion or the dream state as separate or other than itself. It sees that everything is itself, equally itself. The truth of our being is not content until it has freed itself of its own misunderstanding, its own fixations, its own illusions. Unenlightened beings are often those who dedicate their lives completely to the welfare of others. Sorry, enlightened beings are often those who dedicate their lives completely to the welfare of others. So upon awakening, there is no longer choice. Upon awakening, there is only pure service to life awakening. So you can use words like honor and duty. Open to perceiving the inherent compassion of reality itself. Reality is in the process of awakening all of itself to itself. Totally sincere. So stop avoiding things. If there is anything that is unresolved in yourself, turn toward it, face it, look at it. The technique is sincerity. We need to really want the truth. Radical sincerity. So perfect. And that's why um, Papaji and Ramana Maharshi were so adamant also about these analogies. Like you have to create this flame for truth and then fan it. This fire for truth and then fan it with earnestness and sincerity. That's a Nisargatata Maharaj. Choice in language is earnestness. It's so good. We can have a deep realization of our true nature, seeing that the mind itself is a dream and that the person we thought we were is a dream. But that doesn't necessarily mean we will never be deluded by a thought again. So Adya calls these Velcro thoughts, which are thoughts that hook us 
immediate re-identification with the thinking pattern. And slowly we liberate ourselves of these Velcro patterns. The more spiritual awakening matures in us, the more we see through. There is less and less tendency to get caught by thought. Nisargatata Maharaj, egoic personality, of course it does, but I see it at once that it is illusion and I discard it. So there will still be those conditioning remnants that arise, but you become more and more like a Jedi to see through it and discard it. There is always a possibility that an old condition tendency can arise. Simply recognizing it as illusory at the moment of it arising, and in that seeing, he cast it aside. It dissolved. Some of the deepest and most contracted thought patterns to arise just after awakening. I've experienced that so much. It's like a roller coaster. It's like to a new level of awakening and then right back down to a contracted state. And again, you get more and more liberated of those ups and downs. Avoid spiritual bypassing, dismissing the thought, ignoring the fact that we got caught in a moment of re-identification. So have the willingness to look at these moments of identification clearly and honestly. Engage in self-inquiry. Writing is very helpful. Enter into the thought pattern that had triggered the re-identification. So use writing as a tool for self-inquiry. It's beautiful. It is a cycle. A thought creates a feeling, and that feeling creates the next thought, which then creates the next feeling. Willingness to enter into the feeling come from our childhood. Investigate in a meditative way. Gotten to the bottom of one single thought pattern. It's a good way to get all the way to the source of these conditioning thought patterns. The more awake we become, the more that re-identification hurts. It's like being pulled forcibly out of heaven back into hell. I would stick with it until I saw all the way through a moment of identification when it completely released from my system. Willingness to stick with the inquiry so that the illusion could be pulled up by its root. Ultimately, what's important is to go to the heart of the thinking and feeling process. Only then can we find the illusory beliefs that are creating pain in the present moment. Difficult moments in our lives, we've developed spontaneous coping strategies, more pain than we are able to face head on. When these Velcro thoughts and emotions arise, the key is to face and investigate whatever belief structures underlie them. Inquiry is your spiritual practice. Avoid this practice is to avoid your own awakening. Anything you avoid in life will come back over and over again until you're willing to face it, to look deeply into its true nature. The only way to know that we've seen into the true nature of something is that the story we're telling ourselves releases. It is felt to be illusion. The choice is between meditative inquiry and becoming a victim. And when the story releases, the unbounded freedom sets in. 
the entire structure of a personal worldview and a personal self is nothing but a dream in universal mind. We come to nirvana by way of samsara. We come to the truth to freedom by way of bondage. We come to see the true nature of things by seeing through the illusory nature of things. We don't come to nirvana by avoiding samsara. We don't come to heaven by avoiding hell or trying to sidestep it. We don't come to clarity by avoiding confusion. We don't come to freedom by avoiding that which is less than freedom. So you have to purify your shit. Otherwise, samskaras, vasanas will run your life. So conditioning will run your life if you don't purify your shit. And you can also think about this like perpetual neti neti, not this, not that. Because the more that you recognize that I'm not my bondages, the more that you create the unbounded freedom. Illusions, the beliefs we hold on to, are the very doorways to our freedom. Each moment of apparent bondage as an invitation to freedom. An act of love, compassion to stop running away. The texture and flow of our lives from moment to moment is itself what reveals freedom. Texture is a great way to put it. Awakening reveals our already perfect inherent freedom, clarity and courage to look into anything that may have the power to Velcro us into pain and identification. This seeing and releasing becomes natural, spontaneous. It becomes like a contemplative fitness AI. Seeing and releasing becomes so internalized that it's almost automatic. Inquiry meets the thought and it opens itself to freedom. Awareness is freeing itself over and over and over. Key is sincerity, the willingness to meet sincerely and honestly what is happening in our body and mind. The doorway to freedom. So awareness, perpetual neti neti from attributes is freedom. Awareness, perpetually neti neti attributes is boundless freedom. And so the contemplative fitness AI becomes more and more robust. Because it picks up more and more of the fixation patterns. And then you liberate yourself faster and faster from those to get freedom. Also, if you haven't noticed yet, I don't really necessarily mention the the way that I read, but if you do have that that awareness of how I read and how I mark what I read, how I do an exegesis, which is when you draw out what is most salient. One of the best ways to do that is through these highlights of keys and to switch colors and highlights. And then another way is based on underlining with a thin pen and also writing the key aspects on the page as well, like your own ways that you're synthesizing and then further distilling and refining. And then also using these sticky notes to help mark the book like this. So that's a little breakdown. And also 
Another aspect is to block off very long periods of time, like from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m. and do nothing but read because that's where all of the firing and wiring and retention happens and then that's what you bring out to your perception. And so you can get through 100 pages in a day like that. You can get through a book in two, three, four days. But you have to be dedicated like that. And then after 8 o'clock, you can, you know, relax as well. But I highly suggest that for adepts and seekers. We actually just sat there and told each other the truth, simply coming out of hiding. The core of this fear, if they were actually truthful and totally sincere and honest, they would no longer be able to control anybody. Tell the truth. Tell the total truth. Our inside is suddenly on the outside. Nothing hidden anymore. Love that. How pure consciousness manifests as a human being in an undivided way. Full truth conscious. Notice the very forces within us that keep us from manifesting truthfulness in every situation. When we tell the truth, it has the sense of a confession. We come completely out of hiding. To speak the truth is to speak from a sense of total and absolute unprotectedness. True freedom is everything is free. Freedom is the realization that everything and everybody gets to be exactly as they are. This is how reality sees things. We are seeing it as a possession and we are only concerned with ourselves. That's why the famous Dzogchen Buddhist phrase, as it is. The totality was expressing awakening through the being of the Buddha, allowing the whole world to wake up. Until you have given the whole world its freedom, you'll never have your freedom. And when you look at things like Avalokitesvara, which is this many-headed and many-armed Buddha that embodies the all Buddha, so the most compassion for all sentient life, it is very fractal in its nature. It's self-similar in its nature, and yet it's also chaotic. And so when you look at the different patterns that emerge, you can see us as that. You can see that your nature as the infinity expressing itself is expressed in a fractal, self-similar, chaotic way that looks very much like the net of being also of Alex Gray's. Or again, this many-headed many armed avalokiteshvara buddha all buddha and so it becomes easier and easier to dissolve separation when you begin coming from there allowing 
the whole world to wake up. Being in service to the whole world waking up. Having that be your honor and duty. So the radical acceptance of the entire universe is what enables your freedom. And then naturally, organically, there will also be the architectural environmental updates that come through science and engineering and maximizing human potential, meeting the sustainable development goals, etc. When everyone is allowed to be as they are, when you have given them that freedom, do you find within yourself the capacity to be honest and real and true? We cannot be true as long as we are expecting or wanting others to agree with us. Mm, that's been so fun. Just the radical non-attachment to even the biggest like proposals that you make that then other teammates are like, nah, brah. And then it's like, Cool. <laughs> when we are protecting ourselves, we are also withholding freedom from everybody else. When we realize that we are the one and only spirit that manifests as everything and everyone, then we realize there's total freedom for all. Fearlessness in this realization Part of being awake is being willing to be crucified. Jesus, crucified for expressing what he knew to be true. And this archetype of crucifixion is like purification. Willing to throw yourself into the fire. Dissolving conditioning and egoic structures for the God-realized state. Killing truly enlightened beings because true enlightenment does not conform to the dream state. The dream state feels offended and threatened by true enlightenment. And so this is why societies typically do kill enlightened beings because they're not conforming. A truly enlightened being cannot be controlled. Even the threat of death cannot control an enlightened being. Given the whole world its freedom, then you have gone a long way toward finding your own freedom. If you can be truthful with yourself, then you can be truthful with anybody. Sincerity. Sincerity and honesty are manifestations of the absolute nature of being. Awakening moves toward and into that which is not awake. Coming completely out of hiding and being willing to see every point of fixation, every way you go into division, enables this part of the journey to continue. You feel yourself opening on levels that you never dreamed possible. Mm. 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 Our human nature and our divine nature are one, one being, one expression, one truth. Sincerity is the key. You have to be willing. You have to want to see everything. When you want to see everything, you will see everything. When we awaken, we start to become more conscious of the patterns of behavior in our lives that are not in harmony with what we have realized. As we become more awake, we find that there is more and more pressure to encounter and deal with those areas of our lives that we have been avoiding, where we are less than fully conscious.
It demands that we come out of hiding on every level. Let truth penetrate certain relationships they may be in. Family, friendships, love, marriage is more comfortable to hide from the truth. Hide from certain patterns of dysfunction that may be present. If we do not face ourselves, we can actually stall our spiritual unfolding. Beautiful. One of the dangers of awakening, one can start to divorce oneself from the grittiness of life and the grittiness of relationship. In relationship, you have to be willing to not stay hidden away in a transcendent state. Come out of it, deal with people and situations. Enlightenment, if it's true and real, does not allow us to avoid anything. Enlightened perspective actually makes it quite difficult, ultimately impossible, to turn away from any part of our life. Change always has a quality of unknowingness. Becoming fully awake, come fully out of hiding, confront our life as it is. Are we relating from that place where we see that the other is our own self, actually the same nature as our own self? Mm. In the end, it's about truth. It is about being truthful in all aspects, at all levels of our being. So good. Life itself is nothing but relationship. In the ultimate view of things, it's the relationship of the one with the one. The dance of relationship, the dance of life. Absolutely essential that we not hide from anything. Choose not to deal with it. The consequence of that denial is that you will not truly be liberated. Any area where we choose to remain unconscious will ultimately have an impact upon us as well as others. Awakened consciousness does not deny anything. It does not hide. It is not avoiding any part of life. Fully engaged and fearless. Out of unconditional love and truthfulness. I love this. And the way that Adyashanti is expressing it here is like a Navy SEALs drill sergeant that is reminding me and hopefully many of you that like just fully engage fearlessly in what is arising out of unconditional love and truthfulness. Because it's so easy for me, for many of us to avoid those areas. Avoidance is going to hinder your spiritual awakening. Awakening can be the ground from which we meet every person in situation. It can be the ground from which we relate to all the circumstances of life. Courage, fearlessness, very simple sincerity, loves the truth. Truth is the greatest good. To be less than truthful with the people and situations in your life is to withhold the expression of who you are. Truth itself is the highest good. Truth itself is the greatest expression and manifestation of love. Love and truth are identical, like two sides of a coin. Love, truth. Two sides, same coin. Beautiful. Cool. So here's a little <clears throat> visualization that we'll unpack here. So, so here you have the oceanicness, 
And here you have the waves. And so what you see here is the oceanicness being the unity, the infinity, the emptiness, the absoluteness that is comprehending all of the expression of the waves. Using consciousness, awareness, as the primary attribute that enables comprehension. Awareness, consciousness enables comprehension of infinite creation, of endless waves. And so this is where all of the differentiation takes place. This is where the 10,000 things takes place. And this is where ego and where separation and where Maya, the illusion, the intoxication, where this takes place. This is where the seeking of material possessions and relationships and substances and experiences takes place. And that big old sledgehammer comes in, the drill sergeant of awakening, suffering, for catalyzing that parable of prodigal son turn inward and then that's where all these you know the this is also what the pinocchio knows is where all these onion layers of conditioning hide and upon that turn inward is when you start decreasing this pinocchio nose where you start liberating yourself of these conditioning onion layers and you have to be careful because as you get to this pure consciousness as you get to this empty infinite oceanic absoluteness that you're going to encounter these crevices and these crevices are are where you can fall into ways of patterned expression that are no longer actually looking at the places where you need to look to further purify your conditioning and to further awaken. And so another way to look at this on this side of it is that you have the ego maya separation on this side and as you go inward, you go more and more into this dimensionless singularity of this infinite oceanic conscious empty expression of infinite creation that is then being comprehended. And here's another way, the crevices on the flat mountain from ego, the many paths to the one end, absolute. And then here's that visualization of the crevice and we have a video on our channel titled flat mountain if you would like to investigate this in more depth it takes into account the simultaneity of non-duality as well as duality ego grasps at awakening Most common is the delusion of superiority, almost a natural part of the process. This is an enlightened ego. Using some of the energy and realization of awakening to construct a new and superior sense of self. True state of awakeness never use what we have realized to hide from anything within ourselves we welcome everything into the light of being the buddhist heart sutra there is no birth no old age and no death no end to birth old age or death and that's simultaneity again On the journey from non-abiding to abiding awakening, our greatest ally is a deep and profound sense of sincerity. Superiority is a form of arrogance. Mind is using insight to hide. P. 
People who have this overt sense of superiority want to make sure other people hear them and know what they know. If you do feel a sense of superiority, this is not the view of true awakening. This is the view of an ego that is grabbing awakening and pretending to be awake. After awakening, some amount of the superiority is normal. In Zen, there is drunk on emptiness, meaning being a bit drunk on the inherent energy and beauty of awakening itself. What is left of the egoic structure gets exuberantly drunk on the realizations of awakening. See it for what it is, part of the awakening process for a lot of people. Stay in a place that is sincere. Any sense of superiority is not true. All delusions begin in the mind. The key to unraveling any delusion, to seeing through anything that separates us, is to uncover its genesis. Jesus, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Sin means missing the mark. We have all acted in less than enlightened ways. When we operate from the point of view of non-separation, any sense of superiority dissolves. Sense of superiority, don't believe it. If you try to push it away, whatever you resist persists. Another way to say this is superiority, man. They didn't know anything about reality. I, on the other hand, had this great realization. Allowed myself to be defeated. Again, surrender the chess game of unworthiness that is fighting for worthiness because you're already the sun. Most common traps meaninglessness. The ego's desire to find meaning in life is actually a substitute for the perception of being life itself. The search for meaning in life is a surrogate for the knowledge that we are life. Only someone who is disconnected from life itself will seek meaning. Only someone disconnected from life will look for purpose. When we have a direct connection with life, the quest for meaning and purpose seems insignificant. The illusion of ego is noticing that there is no meaning. It is peering into the truth as it were, which can be very disorienting. From an awakened point of view, to say there's no meaning and no purpose is tremendously positive. It is positive because one has found something better than meaning or purpose. One has actually awakened as the very essence of existence itself. Awaken as the very essence of existence itself. The very essence. existence itself awakening benefits being there is nothing more devastating than looking at truth from the standpoint of ego I'll get to that in a moment being stuck in emptiness being stuck in the transcendent being stuck in the position of the witness it can feel wonderful to be in a state of witnessing that we are witnessing itself we are the witness to everything. The ego can set up camp anywhere. It is a shapeshifter. It is very cunning, very subtle. The ego's illusion is one of the most impressive forces in all of nature. It's like the coolest force. And a major part to that veil of forgetting. Oh fuck, all my striving for a traceless Wikipedia page is useless. So that's a quick way to get yourself to turn away from seeking validation and fame 
to see the emptiness in it. Ramana Maharshi, the world is illusion. Brahman alone is real. The world is Brahman. And I also heard that accredited to Adi Shankara as well. But so those three sentences will get you directly to the non-dual nature. Worlds are transient. Consciousness is eternal. Worlds are the absolute. So even though worlds are transient, worlds are the absolute. Again, there it is. This is the highest appearing and exploring, which we are. We are the highest appearing and exploring. Realization of true oneness. Witness position collapses into the totality. And that's a really profound one is the actual subject itself dissolves into the totality. So such a critical, critical part. So it's very important to objectify even the subject. To decentralize yourself even from the subject even from awareness consciousness itself the seer and what is seen are the same we can become stuck in a transcendent void in emptiness Don't get stuck in the transcendent. There is nowhere we should fixate. To be truly awake, to be enlightened, is to be free of all grasping, to be free of all points of view. That state is literally indescribable. It's so beautiful on our No Limit Society Keta call today. That was coming through. And it was so beautiful and indescribable. I can explain certain aspects of realization, facets on the jewel of enlightenment. The Tao that can be spoken is not the true Tao. My intention is to fail as well as I can at speaking what's not speakable. The next phase of the journey of awakening was the collapsing of the witness position. If witnessing is different from the witness, then there is an inherent division, collapse of the external witness. With that collapse, you can start to see the elements of ego that are using the witnessing position as a way to hide, to not be touched by life, to not feel certain things, to not encounter our lives directly and intimately in a gritty human way. The seeing of an untruth is the biggest element in its dissolution. It must be discovered in oneself for oneself. So witness, witnessing, and witnessed are all one true non-duality we must take responsibility for really looking at ourselves see more deeply than we ever imagined i'm here to give hints and clues and to question the answers you've already assumed are true the true role of teachers is to question their students answers not to sit around giving answers of their own i love that A whole other perception unfolds when we stop fixating egoically, enlightened ego. Deep looking, these delusions start to die. Then a whole new area of our spiritual life begins to open up.
ever opening, ever deeper remembering of the more subtle aspects of our true nature. It is the very nature of spiritual unfolding itself. Perfect. Life itself holds up a mirror for our awakening. Everyday life can be our most valuable teacher. I realized that I was no longer an athlete. The persona of the athlete no longer belonged to me. I had an incredible sense of relief and lightness because I didn't have to be that physically dominant person anymore. I started to see my illness as a true gift, a form of grace. And I had a similar experience on my 28th birthday. So about two weeks before my 28th birthday, I was playing football. And I was slightly, started to slightly rain and I went for a catch and I caught the football on a running pass with a defender and as I caught it slid into this metal stake that was hidden in the ground next to a bush and it broke one of my ribs fractured another one and then the rib penetrated my lung and so I had both um, uh, the subcutaneous emphysema from the air uh, leaving the the lung and also the partially um, deflated lung, the pneumothorax. Um, and that was really profoundly awakening because I immediately felt the trauma flip into a treasure immediately it was crazy because it was like it was it was really high it might have been like eight out of ten pain almost nine out of ten pain it was like some of the worst i've ever felt in my life i thought i was dying and while that was happening i was seeing how incredibly treasure filled the experience was and I was like, what wisdom am I extracting from this? And it was crazy because everybody around me that was there playing football and friends that we were at the lake with, they were like, this is, there was like a massive level of equanimity. Like it was so painful, but it was only the pain. It was like so much equanimity about the experience and about the treasure, the wisdom that comes from it right off the bat. It was so beautiful. But this is so relatable for me because this, I've been an athlete my whole life. And so to undergo this process of being like, you know, truly like respecting the fact that even today, like, it's like, 10 months later, today, 10 months later, I still can't sleep on the left side of my body. And so just respecting the fact that that this athlete persona is no longer a burden, but it's, you know, as it is. It was really relatable and really beautiful. And this was also profoundly earth shattering. The relief of being literally nobody. I was nobody. I was unborn, undying, uncreated to be nobody and nothing on such a deeply human level. Whew.
I didn't have to be competitive anymore. I could simply ride. I still felt the joy in exercising and using my body, but that second illness eradicated the egoic tendency to find an identity around a body-centered image. This was a great relief and a great joy. The greatest solvent for ego was found within my own life. Suffering as that greatest solvent for ego. It's great. Life itself has a tremendous capacity to show us truth to wake us up. Yet many of us avoid this thing called life, even as it is attempting to wake us up. The divine itself is life in motion. Many times it takes the difficult situations to wake us up. Most people make their greatest leaps in consciousness in the difficult times. Our greatest difficulty, suffering and pain, are a form of fierce grace. I love those two words to describe the unbounded mystery. Fierce grace. If we're ready to turn and face them, we can see and receive the gifts that they have to offer. I finally found the willingness to let go of everything I thought I was. Let go of every sense of self that could ever arise. I started to feel the sense of freedom that comes when karmic conditioning is squeezed out of your system. Even though you know it is a dream, you still have to deal with it. If there are still conflicts in your system that are unmet, there will be a gravitational pull to bring consciousness back into suffering. Life is attempting to hold up a mirror, to squeeze the conditioned self out of us, to squeeze out of us the holding and grasping, to squeeze out all of our beliefs and ideas and concepts and self-images. Life is always in the process of waking us up. Life is your greatest teacher. Most people who say they want awakening don't actually want to awaken. They want their version of awakening. What they actually want is to be really happy in their dream state. The real, sincere impulse towards enlightenment is willing to subject itself to whatever is needed in order to wake up. <laughs> That's the purification fire, baby. Puts no conditions on what we have to go through. When you feel it, you know it is real. Let go of all conditions. Let go of how you want your own awakening to be, what you want the journey to be like. Let go of your illusion of control. We have to be willing to lose our whole world. Let go into uncertainty, into the unknown, into the uncontrollable. This isn't a journey about becoming something. This is about unbecoming who we are not, about undeceiving ourselves. It's ironic. We don't end up anywhere other than where we have always been, except that we perceive where we have always been completely differently. We realize that the heaven everyone is seeking is where we have always been. Come into agreement with your life so that you're not turning away from yourself in any way. When we are no longer turning away from ourselves, we find a great amount of energy, a great capacity for clarity and wisdom, and we start to see everything we need to see.
Awakening is waking up from the person and transforms the person. An irreversible seeing. I am everything and I am nothing. I am beyond everything and nothing. What I am is inexpressible. Right to the very root of existence. <laughs> and perforated, unbounded. Afterward, what had been realized was never unrealized. It was never forgotten. The aperture didn't close down again. When we have realized the nature, true nature of existence, when existence itself has awakened to itself. Rewiring occurs in the mind, how we sense and perceive, deep change in the way the whole energetic system of our body flows and moves and is experienced. When we become really conscious, the blocks and barriers, the internal dams open up. There is an immense release of energy. Anytime the egoic structure dissolves, there is a releasing of energy. The dream state itself, the state of egoic separation, chews up a tremendous amount of energy. You can feel how the perception of separation is draining your energy. Only when consciousness has spontaneously freed itself from the dream state, that there is a huge internal release, mostly because the blocks are no longer there. And this can be viewed as chakra spectrography where you see those seven chakras or like prismatically refracted light as well and you can see that many people on earth are still in this yellow third density third chakra and then we're undergoing the opening to the fourth chakra the heart chakra the density of love and so the empty awakeness holds space for unblocking toward freedom. So you can view the two entities coming together and that one of the mind-body-spirit complexes has unblocked potentially even all the way up through the crown and the other one is maybe anchoring in some of those heart chakras and so the one that's more unblocked is serving more clearly it's a teach learn learn teach but it's also a clear um, you can see it like orically my mind was being rewired i noticed a much greater capacity for clarity and simplicity and I'll bring this up in a bit, but this has a lot to do with the default mode network, the neural lattice being contracted and then undergoing the process of liberation or freedom or depth of interconnectedness and interpenetration that then enables you to experience more like a mycelial network rather than a person. And so this also leads to precision consciousness. When you serve, you can identify patterns in these unblockages and ask good questions and hold really strong space. So precise like a laser, significant quieting of the mind. There was no trying to quiet it. The thoughts that moved through my mind were more often functional thoughts, things that were actually necessary to think about. We humans spend maybe 10% of our time thinking about things we really need to think about. We spend the other 90% of our time imagining, fantasizing, and becoming involved in all sorts of internal stories and dramas that have no basis in truth. When our consciousness is no longer obsessed with the mind, the mind relaxes, softens, and opens. 
Eckhart Tolle, for a good two years after his awakening, he had a hard time using his mind. Relax and let the reorientation process happen. I'm going through a similar process of of uh, just like figuring out this reorientation. Just relaxing into the cosmological phenomena of awakening is it's beautiful, it's indescribable. Relaxation itself promotes a quickening of the physical transformation. After awakening, senses become extraordinarily acute. Widening of our field of peripheral vision, feel what somebody else is feeling, sensitive to the energy of environments and the energy fields of other people. Energy fields of animals or trees or plants or our houses or particular rooms. I feel everything everybody else is feeling i feel what is happening inside everybody else it is not necessary for you to feel everything somebody else feels sometimes an underlying infatuation with one's empathic ability eavesdropping on someone's energetic state we unconsciously find that pleasurable Orient ourselves to our newfound sensitivity so we don't get too involved in everybody else's business. Just being in the person's presence may be healing for others. Cities or spiritual powers can become another spiritual trap. They come as gifts. So again here it's like unblocked facilitates unblockages. So... The entity that is unblocked facilitates the unblocking. Energetic reorientation lasted for a period of four or five years before it settled down. Sometimes just walking on the earth in bare feet can help ground the energy that is moving through your system. Sit quietly and put your attention on them. Just leave your attention there. Touch the blockage and see what wants to be shown to you energetic unfolding is very much a part of spiritual unfolding i've seen the absolute nature of reality this isn't the whole of it keep going it is essential that an initial awakening isn't owned or claimed that there is no assumption of completion A new journey begins, expressing non-division at every level of your being. This is a journey that may take years to complete itself. I've equated awakening with being in an undivided state. Non-division is the effect of awakening. It is the expression of the realization of our true nature. Great poems, Zen, description of the awakened state. To be without anxiety about imperfection. Oh, that doesn't fit my idea of what an enlightened being would be. That doesn't fit my image of what an undivided being is like. Ordinary person. Awakening is dying into ordinariness, into non-anxiety. The state of non-division is not something you can understand until it starts to wake up within you. Being undivided, seeing and acting from non-separation, from oneness, is something that we must each discover for ourselves. In any moment, are you experiencing and acting from division or are you experiencing and acting from oneness? Perfect. Dying into ordinariness, into non-anxiety. Awakening impacts us on three different levels of our being. The mental level, mind, emotional level, heart, existential level, gut. Nothing in the structure of thought is ultimately true.
The mind has usurped reality. Human beings find our sense of self, who we think we are, our self-image in our thinking process. Mind has no inherent reality to it. It's a tool that reality can use, but it's not reality. Thought itself is empty. It's empty of reality. At best, thought is symbolic. It may point in the direction of a truth or an object, but many thoughts don't even do that. Awaken on the level of mind, we begin to perceive from beyond the mind. The mind itself is empty of reality. This is a profound realization. To see that the mind is empty of reality is radical in the extreme. Our whole sense of self and the world is created in the mind. The world as we perceive it through the mind can't have any reality. The self that we perceive ourselves to be has no reality. Awakening on the level of mind is the destruction of your entire world. What is destroyed is our entire world view. All the ways we are conditioned, our belief structures, this consensus, this viewing of things as true, literally down to I'm a human being or there is such a thing as a world. So perceiving and acting from no mind, simply as life, the one. The way I saw the world was a complete fabrication, literally the stuff of dreams. The way I saw myself was also completely fabricated. Non-division at the level of mind is to move, is to have all of these ego structures completely wiped away. It's almost impossible for me to coherently express how thorough this destruction of the world is on the mental level. Buddha himself said that all dharmas are empty. The truth of who you are lies far beyond even the greatest dharmas, the greatest sutras, the greatest ideas that could ever be spoken or written down or read. In essence, they're all meant to point you to the beyondness which is then fully realized and experienced on a moment-to-moment -moment basis enlightenment is the crumbling away of untruth complete eradication of everything we imagine to be true from ourselves to the world most of us protect ourselves from seeing this truth it actually destroys our ability to see the world in the old way. It renders our old world rubble. What we are left with is nothing. And this is where you can play a little bit more with this default mode network and neural lattice analogy where it's avoiding entropic awakening. So the contracted energy is avoiding the disordered state of awakening to the interdependence and interconnectivity of the one force, the one field. Birds have nests, foxes have holes, man has nowhere to rest his head. Only with complete release can the truth of what we are shine through undistorted. The crumbling of mind and world is what the truth of being is seeking to accomplish. We find out that we cannot conceptualize the truth. What is then using the mind is being. Thought can arise from silence. Speech can arise from silence. Communication can arise from silence. So again, being universal, using the mind-body-spirit complexes. Absolute source God uses mind rather than separate extractive person.
Mind always remains transparent to itself, never fixates and creates a new belief or ideology. No longer defining ourselves through what we feel, our emotions and feelings are fantastic pointers to what is unresolved in our being. And I love how Bentinho Massaro calls this the emotional guidance system. Emotions are pointing to what is unresolved and how to shift back into alignment with that love light awareness, with the God state, with that universal beingness. If we can be knocked out of emotional balance very easily, non-equanimity, then it's vital we start to look at our emotional lives. The nature of fear, the nature of anger, when we feel an emotional contraction, what is that contraction about? We react emotionally to thoughts that we often don't even know we are having. In that way, those unconscious thoughts are made manifest. If they want to release it, they have to get at the underlying worldview of the feeling. How This person is being drawn into an emotional state of division. We are set up to experience negative emotion anytime we are perceiving from a state of division. Whenever we go into division, there is some level of emotional conflict, which can function as a call to attention. In what way am I going into division? So stop perceiving division in the undifferentiated. Sit with the emotion and meditate on it. If the emotion could speak, what would it say? No thought that causes division is true. We construct a whole life around being a victim, a means by which we go into separation. So there's your victim equals separation. We experience division because we are in an argument with reality. So not arguing with God equals wholeness. If we argue with reality, we will go into division. Reality is simply what is. There isn't a justified reason to argue with reality. Because we'll never win the fight, arguing with reality is a sure way to suffer, a perfect prescription for suffering. True inquiry has no goal other than truth itself. Desire and the willingness to see what is true, to see how we ourselves are putting ourselves into conflict. A portal to look from the awakened state, itself a lover of truth. Freedom from emotions that are derived from division. Certain emotions are beautifully derived from unity. Fear is the linchpin that holds our emotional sense of self intact. We have this idea of who we are that is limited and separate. This sense of self, this sense of separateness, is an illusion. It's a little lie we tell ourselves that opens us up to fear.
We are life itself. When we see and perceive that what we are, the totality of life, So let's stay with this for a second longer. We are life itself. When we see and perceive that we are the totality of life itself, we are no longer afraid of it. We no longer feel afraid of birth, life, and death. We begin to awaken. We are free to sense the world in a deeper way. Different potential becomes available to us heart-centered area is capable of incredible sensitivity. Absolute knows itself through the whole dream substrate. The main processing center is consciousness, heart. So the electromagnetic oceanicness of the absolute dream structure has these little whirlpool galaxies that are these individuated mind body spirit complexes conscious heart undergoing the fluxed processing the whole body mind as a sensing instrument of the absolute there's nothing to protect all the thoughts ideas beliefs that cause us to go into emotional protection are false opening of the spiritual heart christ someone who is not defending himself or herself on the emotional level or the intellectual level We experience ourselves in an ultimate sense to be totally unguarded. What naturally flows out of us is love, unconditional love, which gets balanced with wisdom. The ultimate nature of reality is indiscriminate. Reality is what is. The truest sign of an awakened heart is that it is an indiscriminate lover of what is. It loves everything because it sees everything as itself. Point to what is not you. Reality being in love with itself happens through the awakened heart. As people are coming close to awakening, they commonly experience an intuitive sense of clutching and holding on even more tightly as if they are going to be destroyed or killed. The very act of trying to get rid of something sustains it. You're unconsciously granting it reality. Let go. Surrender. There's nothing the I or the me can do. Fully letting that in, being fully penetrated by that awareness, is itself the final letting go. You must come to the end of your rope. There's a beautiful process of envisioning yourself coming from the sourcefulness and how that requires 
you to come to the end of the rope of the separate self. Illusion of a separate self dies. Only when you are willing to die for the sake of truth can that grasping truly and authentically let go. Life is traumatic to a sense of separate self. So separation catalyzes victimhood. Tao, truth, flow. Get out of the driver's seat. Life has always been driving itself. Life becomes magical. Illusion of the me is no longer in the way. Anthony DeMello, enlightenment is absolute cooperation with the inevitable. Not just a realization, but an activity. Say a simple and sincere yes to life, yes to death, yes to the ego's own dissolving. We don't have to struggle anymore. Flow is what navigates us through life. Flow is always amazing. It is the expression of unity. It directs our existence in ways that are healing and loving, and it brings things together in ways we couldn't imagine. Enlightenment as active God flow. It is necessary to have the courage to question, which takes real energy. It requires focus and attention to look at your underlying patterns. One of the teacher's primary tasks is to help students connect to their own intuitive, natural sense of direction, the inner teacher. Satguru, truth teacher within. There is a time to make effort and to be disciplined. There is a time to let go. That is up to grace. All spiritual awakening is towards surrender. Ultimately, that's the name of the spiritual game. Everything we do spiritually is leading us to a spontaneous state of surrender, to letting go. Each step along the way is the next opportunity to surrender, to let go into grace but ultimately the whole of spirituality boils down to letting go of the illusion of the separate self. The natural state, there is a maturing from awakening to what could be called enlightenment. This is one of my favorite definitions of the nature of reality pure potential the tendency to fixate has been liberated deep ease deep naturalness deep simplicity I'll show you this in a moment it's like a job well done at the end of the day you just go home 
Everything is spontaneously put down. Spirituality itself is put down. Freedom is put down. Free of our need for freedom. Enlightened from our need for enlightenment. The whole idea of spirituality is itself a fabrication. We see that everything is transparent, ephemeral, fleeting, of the nature of a dream. Our greatest realizations, our greatest moments of aha are actually dreams within the infinity of the unborn. One's own great awakening was just another dream that never happened. Shining presence through it all. Cool. So here's a visualization of this pure potentiality. So you have this, the absolute emptiness, nothingness, the absolute infinity creation and you have this state of no self and then you have this conscious comprehension this aware comprehension of this eternal creation and you have maya and you have the illusion of separation and this is all about the turn inward and uncovering oneself as this very formless, indescribable, oceanic comprehension, empty, infinity, pure potentiality. Uh. Gone, gone, gone beyond, completely gone. Beyond even awakening itself, spirituality, religion, propel consciousness beyond its fixation and identification with form. Simple and ordinary way, right back in our life. Jesus said, in the world, but not of the world. It's a willing incarnation. Drinking a cup of tea is experienced as a full expression of ultimate reality. Enlightenment is dying into the ordinary. Extraordinary ordinariness. The ordinary is extraordinary, a hidden secret. All along we were in the kingdom of heaven. There was only nirvana. No longer pushed or pulled, need to achieve, need to be known, recognized, confirmed, loved, liked. This energy is undivided, forever completely transcendent and forever completely right here. It is extraordinary as it is. Our greatest contribution to humanity is our awakening. Come back as a gift, a newborn. Christ's transformation. The greatest help we can offer is our own awakening. Heal the illusory divisions within ourselves. That's the ultimate gift we can give to humanity. True transformation always comes from the inside. It comes from awakening. The outside world is nothing but an expression of the inside. What is manifest is nothing but an expression of the unmanifest. Each of us who comes into the natural, simple, undivided state is making a contribution to all beings. Become undivided in your own consciousness. Become part of the manifestation of unity. Enlightenment is extraordinarily wonderful and profound, but also very simple. Great definition of enlightenment, the natural state of being. It 
It takes a tremendous amount of energy to maintain the illusion of division because it's not the natural state. Humanity is already in an altered state of consciousness called separation. Separation is the ultimate altered state of consciousness. Enlightenment is an unaltered state of consciousness. Pure consciousness as it actually is. The kingdom of heaven is the natural state of being. Nirvana, totally natural and spontaneous way of being. Simple and natural state of awakening, allowing ourselves to literally disappear into absolute simplicity. Completely leaving the human condition, viewing things from a conventional perspective was over for me. This is actually the promised land as it is, if only we will open our eyes and see it. So leave separation, disappear into unified, pure potential. Die into the ordinary. Awaken from one world to another, from one context to a totally different context. Separate self-world that you thought was objective all of a sudden seems not as real. Life is like a dream that's happening within what you are, within vast infinite space. A dream that's happening within the infinite expanse of emptiness. Snuck out of the dream, snuck into outer space. Oh, when did that happen? No thought can be grasped as real, true, or significant is the experience of freedom beyond gravitational force of the dream state. So good. So good. The death of Velcro thoughts. So good. Mm. Velcro thoughts, instant of grasping, certain separateness. The gap between the arising of a sticky thought and its disappearance becomes so narrow that the arising and disappearing is almost simultaneous. The gap gets so small that at a certain point, you almost can't see a gap. It doesn't matter that we've had a thought because we don't get caught for very long. That's really part of the freedom. The gap between the divisive thought and believing in the thought becomes non-existent. And that's this cessation, this non-existent gap between arising and not biting. So you're auto brushing it off. This automatic contemplative fitness AI where you're perpetually not biting at anything that's arising. Perpetual cessation, perpetual neti neti, perpetual nirvana, this very natural state. Abiding and dancing in unity truth, not divisiveness, delusion, separation. Inquiry. At a certain point, it just happens with little, if any, conscious intention. And this is like when we were talking to Frank Yang on the show, the contemplative fitness AI again. Enlightenment and awakening begins coming to you, which is so beautiful, very naturally. A pure perception of infinity, what Buddhists call emptiness. Vastness of infinity, vastness of space, pure light of being, almost blinding light of being.
the mind as a sensing instrument, sensing infinity. Mm. Love that. Mm. I had my own teacher tell me certain things literally hundreds of times over the years, and only after 10 years did I think, oh, now I get it. Now I understand. Now it has sunk in. How was I going to force it 10 years before? Everything has its time. Everything has its place. Life is in control of what's happening. Live without resistance. Sometimes the experiences that we are pushing away contain the most transformative insights we need to have. And Bentinho Massaro calls this the quantum acceptance. Radically accepting every single subatomic particle in the universe as it is. Anything you know for certain, only that I am. That's it. One thing. Exodus 3.14 I am that I am. That I am is what I am. Ooh. I'm in union with life. I'm no longer arguing with life. It gets to play its part with agreement instead of disagreement. The sense of missionary zeal is pretty much gone. There is no sense that something needs to happen. I see the potential in everybody. But there's no sense of hurry about it. Everyone comes to realization in their own time. Across lifetimes. It's the totality. It's the one itself that we are but expressions of. If we see ourselves as anything but a small part of an infinite mosaic... It seems to me we're starting to become inflated and deluding ourselves. Beautiful. Guiding intelligence appears more as a flow, sensing the energy currents in life. Infinite emptiness. And that smallest point of light is I. And the whole world is contained within that I. The whole world could flicker on and off. 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 Dream state, dream state, not, dream state, not. So interesting. Popping yourself into a black hole. Cessation, 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 nirvana, 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 natural state. Totally transcended, yet completely conscious, present. The confusion from that lifetime popped like a bubble and there was a tremendous sense of freedom. Unresolved from different incarnation, I went through each one of them and unhooked the confusion. Enlightenment leaves no trace. No karmic imprint it leaves behind. Most of the past lives I saw were moments of confusion, moments of unresolved karmic conflict. I don't see them as past because they're all simultaneously occurring, all simultaneously interacting. Ooh, waking up is dying. Everything disappeared, total blankness, absolute non-existence, nothing, no consciousness, zero. 
We must die in order to truly live. We must experience absolute non-existence in order to truly exist in a conscious way. Physical death, forced awakening. Some of the most amazing experiences I've had have been with human beings who are very close to death. They have already let go of the body. They've already died. They already know that all is well. Total radiance. The body has become totally transparent to spirit, inner presence, because the person is no longer holding on to it. Clearly, the actual physical moment of death doesn't need to happen for someone to let go. Mm. Mm. Adyashanti, his name means primordial peace Ooh. what you are is the beyond awake and present here and now already I am simply helping you to realize that beautiful Thanks, Adya Shanti. I love you. We love you. I'm so grateful for you. It's such a powerful read, my brother. Thank you. The end of your world. The link is in the bio for the book. I would highly encourage you to read it. I hope the video brought you value. I hope it created a great catalyst for your awakening as it did for me I'd love for you to leave a comment about where you're at in your journey about the profound takeaways you had from this video like the video helps that algorithm subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and definitely share this video with people that you feel like it would profoundly influence Let's spread the word baby ignite the global awakening and check out the other links in the bio below if you would like to support us and all of our other endeavors they're all down there as well so Thank you, everyone. Infinite love for you. Thank you again, Adi Ashanti. And that is all. As it is.